We spoke in a previous video about general writing principles as well as tips for preparing to write and the revision process for writing. But writing happens in a variety of contexts, each of which requires a slightly different approach. In this video, we'll talk about professional writing in action. We will focus on guidelines for effective written communication in business, including things like texting, business proposals, and resumes. First, let's focus on texting and emailing, which have become increasingly common forms of business communication in recent years. Although we use text and email frequently in our personal lives, it's important to first remember that texting for professional purposes should take on a different tone and style. Be sure that any texts or emails sent in your professional capacity reflect that distinction. We should also be on guard to anticipate and head off potential um, misinterpretation and miscommunication. Text and email uh, or are both channel lean forms of communication, meaning the receiver doesn't have the benefit of supplementing your words with your nonverbal behaviors. As such, it's very easy for the other person to come to a different conclusion than the one you intended. Finally, be careful not to overdo it with texting and emailing. On one hand, you want to be sure that you're not overwhelming the person on the other end with too many messages or messages at inappropriate times of the day. Additionally, it's important that you unplug yourself from time to time. While it can be nice to have the ability to touch base or catch up with work when it's convenient for you, it's not entirely healthy to be connected 24-7. Another form of communication in written form used in business are memos. Memos are typically used for communicating policies, procedures, and other such official business with an organization. It sort of has a mass communication feel in that it's a person or a small group of people sending a message to a wider audience. Whether the purpose of a memo is informative, persuasive, or something else altogether, there are a few guidelines that memo writers should keep in mind. As with virtually all writing for business purposes, the writing in a memo should take on a professional tone. As we discussed before, there are differences between a professional tone and personal tone in writing. Next, a memo should be direct. The purpose of the memo should be made clear right up front, and the information should be communicated in a straightforward and concise manner. Memos should also be audience-oriented, keeping the potential interpretation of the reader at the forefront of the writer's mind at all times. You may also find yourself in a position to write a business proposal, Business proposals are documents intended to persuade an audience to achieve a specific outcome that oftentimes proposes a solution to a problem. You may be sensing a theme when I tell you that the first tip for writing effective business proposals is to be professional. It's important to use a writing style that is appropriate for purposes in order to have your proposal taken seriously. Your proposal should also present a fully formed idea. A business proposal is not the venue for brainstorming or floating ideas. Finally, your proposal should be thorough, including any information that the reader might need for understanding and making a decision regarding your ideas. While business proposals generally include a persuasive slant, reports are designed to simply record or convey information to an audience. At the risk of sounding like a broken record, the first principle for writing effective reports is to be professional. In addition, it's important for the writer to know their purpose in constructing a report. Reports are typically related to a specific topic, a specific audience, and or a specific function. Report writers should identify and stick closely to the intended purpose of their document. Finally, reports should present information as clearly and concisely as possible. Save your fanciest prose and your $10 words for proposals and other documents. Another common type of professional writing involves creating a resume. A resume is a document that summarizes your education, skills, employment history, and work experience for potential employers. 
First and foremost, a resume should, say it with me now, be professional. A resume should also be written from the perspective of a potential reader and take steps to make it as easy as possible for that person to quickly understand the information presented. People in a position of reviewing resumes are not likely to look positively on a resume that requires them to do mental gymnastics. A resume should be uh, also be easily browsable. On average, people reviewing resumes will spend less than a minute on the initial examination in determining whether or not you are a candidate that, that bears further consideration. It is critical that the most important information in your resume stand out clearly in even the most cursory review. The final type of professional writing that we will discuss here is the sales message. A sales message is a persuasive message intended to uh, include information to persuade and call an audience to action while hopefully closing the sale. It should be no surprise at this point that the first guideline for effective sales messages is to be professional with all that entails. Effective sales messages should also balance Aristotle's modes of persuasion, ethos, pathos, and logos. We've discussed these principles in previous videos, which you can consult for a more detailed breakdown. In short, though, the message should convey the credibility of the writer, employ emotional appeals, and also provide sufficient logical appeals. Finally, effective sales messages depend on identifying and speaking to the target audience for that particular message. As the old saying goes, when you speak to everyone, you speak to no one. Any sales message should be tailored to the specific target audience for that message. This is by no means a comprehensive list of different writing contexts. Hopefully you're taking away though, a few helpful tips for some of the more common types of professional writing. However, the key takeaway apart from be professional, of course, is that all types of business writing require slightly different things. It's important to identify and write for the specific context for whatever circumstance you find yourself as a writer.